the first thing you need to establish are your decks even remotely full power because let's say you're playing against tri brigade and they set up their beautiful board and you're sitting there with your elemental hero deck there is nothing you can do about it. Like, let's say Elemental Hero deck, zero hand trap, something like that. No droplets, nothing special, just Flame Wingman. You're summoning fucking Flame Wingman. If you are going into it with that deck, there is no amount of skill that will let you play through a proper tri brigade board. There just isn't. So you need to start from the fact that both of your decks are able to even play the game. And that is the one thing where people get hung up on, right? Grab their deck from 2008, here I go, oh, I'm gonna play my Dark Arm deck from back then, or even like fucking Structure deck Water, whatever. And then they get demolished and they're like, oh, what can you do about that? Well, if you had a proper deck, there was a bunch of stuff you could have done, right? So you start with that. Start with the fact that you have a deck that can actually play the game even when negated let's assume you have proper hand traps right whichever deck you play it probably has max c and ash you know and maybe even forbidden droplets this means that first of all maybe their board wasn't very good because you could hand trap them maybe you were able to nibiru them or you ash them at a key moment so their board is already instead of seven billion negates and two interrupts and blah blah it's already going to be a bit weaker if you had a max c not only do you have your six cards to break through it you might have 17 and then a weak deck will still be able to break it because of your gigantic hand you know you have enough extenders and plays you can do at that point or maybe you have forbidden droplets meaning rather than your opponent having a billion negates you negate their negates by having the staples that allow your deck to play the game at that same level you have options now whereas again if you were going in with elemental hero flame wingman it was never gonna happen now you're gonna start realizing that these unbreakable boards of these best decks usually are actually relatively breakable. Now, Drytron, it, it isn't. <laughs> Sorry. If they have Herald of Ultimateness and you're playing a regular deck and they are gonna have seven negates, there's no breaking that. Just give up. That's fine. Kaiju or a Lava Golem can break that, but beyond that, nothing's gonna break that. GG. But a Tri Brigade board, you know, it might seem unbreakable because of all the shit they have, but if you dissect it, what do they actually have? Well, they might have ended on something along the lines of a Cymorg, which can't be killed an avion whatever the fuck it's called which is one negate and then a utopic draco future which is a monster negate and a steel and then in the back line they might have a revolt so that's one more creating a new guy kind of interrupt whatever so rather than thinking they have a billion negates no they have four let's say and that's like a good board right they have the avion omni negate bird thing they have cymorg which isn't affected they have the revolt which is another thing they make and then they have the utopic draco future that's four things you need to play through well if you have a deck that that's actually good, not Elemental Hero Flame Wingman, you could actually have cards that are worth a lot of cards. A good example here is Phantom Knights, right? If you look at something like a Boots, this is one card. If they interrupt this in some way, let's say you normal summon this and you make something else with it, okay? If they stop that, you went minus one card, okay? But in the graveyard, this guy will get you another card. So modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards are often actually three cards worth of value in one card, or two cards sort of value or whatever. A lot of cards lead to other cards and so forth. For example, Cloak. Cloak might, might be an even better example. You do something with Cloak. Okay, they stop that. Whatever. Cloak now leads to Boots. Okay, you do something with Boots. They stop that. Whatever. Because Boots now gets you a trap, which might be a Shade Brigadine, which then leads to some other play. When you are running modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards with a lot of value in them, they are worth multiple cards, playing through four negates, four interruptions, let's say, isn't quite as daunting. Because sure, if you made a Flame Wingman, you played a Polymerization, an Elemental Hero Avion, and a Burst in a Trix. You actually sacrificed three cards to make one guy that they then fucked, right? Modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards is Ancient Cloak is three cards in one guy. It's the opposite. If they fuck the Cloak, there's a Boots coming, and then uh, if they fuck the Boots, there's another card coming. Knowing which of your cards lead to what and have what value will allow you to think okay i can now waste this knowing that they're gonna have to engage with me in some way they're gonna have to waste their negates or i'm gonna get to play the game because they know this card is gonna lead to more stuff anyway and that is where the game gets more interesting because you start knowing which cards and which plays can you sacrifice right now and they need to know damn which ones do i actually stop let's say i normal summon this thing and i special summon boots are they gonna 
stop me here? Are they? Because if they do, and I now have like an emergency teleport, they did nothing. They did fuck all. And if they stop me, let's say I normal ancient cloak, special boots, and then they, you know, they do something about my boots, they destroy it or whatever. I don't know. Again, hypothetical. If I follow that up with teleport, I can still make my exact same play. That cloak is going to lead to another card. That boots is going to lead to another card. And they wasted one of their four interruptions or whatever. So they're not going to fucking do that. That means I get to play the game. I now have two cards that lead to Cherubini. Now Cherubini, I get to mill something, which again in the graveyard is going to turn into another card. Are they going to stop that? Maybe. But if they do, and I again have like one of these, like a teleporter, a tracker, whatever the fuck, again, they did absolutely nothing. By starting with a deck where all your cards are worth more than one card and you learn about all those interactions, it's going to get less daunting. You're going to start to learn that three or four interruptions, while very strong and often hard to play through, are play throughable. Again, I know it's daunting, but once you realize this type of stuff, again, start by playing a deck that other good players have built. And not necessarily this. I'm not saying this list is perfect. This is still relatively budget because I don't have Rongo. Get a list from someone that's actually good, that you trust, that you think is a good player. By starting with a proper list, it won't be as daunting. And you're going to learn that people aren't going to negate everything you do. Because if they do, you're going to win. And then it's going to get interesting because you're going to be able to go, oh damn, had I not played this, or maybe I had played this and then baited out in the gate, I could have done this and that. 